All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first annual Media Jobs Forum. I'll be the moderator. Uh, my name is Carrie Drohan. I am a, a professor of journalism here at Four Cs, and before that, spent about 35 years in media, uh, including the Cape Cod Times and the Boston Globe. Um, today, we have uh, five distinguished panelists from local media. Um, the format will be it will last about an hour. Uh, round one, I'm going to ask each panelist to explain or assess the uh, um, prospect for media jobs in current and future markets. Um, round two uh, will be, I'm going to ask them all, what skills do you recommend for students? And round three, we're gonna have an open Q&A from students. Um, or anyone who wants to ask a question. When we get to that, I'd ask that you put your questions in the chat just to keep things smooth. Um, there's, uh, I'll give a quick uh, uh, overview of the media jobs market. And it struck me on Sunday as I was watching CBS, uh, they featured Marty Baron, who just retired as editor of the Washington Post. Before that, he was my boss for 11 years at the Globe. Um, one of the legendary people as, as uh, uh, highlighted in the movie Spotlight, but also just a, um, a well-respected editor and people are saying this is an end of an era. I noticed CBS painted a kind of a dim view by saying one in five newspapers closed in the last 20 years and other facts. But um, that, while that's true, I think the outlook is not at all dim for media jobs. In fact, quite to the contrary. Um, I know Marty all through his career was the first to stress that um, an all around skill set is the most valuable thing a journalist can have. When I started at the Cape Cod Times, it was basically write and edit. Now there's so much digital involved um, that it pay, and you also do your own marketing for your own story on uh, various forms, uh, forms of social media. Um, just quickly, the Bureau of Labor Statistics classifies these jobs as media and communication occupations and predicts a 4% growth uh, in the next 10 years until 2029. I think it can only keep expanding. Um, there's also uh, new jobs, uh, digital editor is hot, any sort of digital uh, technical ability is also hot. Um, as Marty Baron was fond of saying, the real boom will come when Google hires 1000 editors instead of 1000 engineers. So, um, and also just the range of occupations within, and I'm just gonna read a couple quick ones within those announcers, editors, writers, recorders, film and video operators, photographers, PR specialists, um, interpreting and translating jobs, tech writers, et cetera, et cetera. So I think you know that's good news for all aspiring uh, media students or even liberal arts majors who are just toying with the idea of going into media. So um, I wanna get right to the panelists but I'm gonna uh, just say who they are to begin with, and then I'm gonna come back in alphabetical order, starting with Marianne Bragg. Um, the panelists are um, Marianne Bragg, who's editor of the Providence, uh, Providence, Provincetown Banner, um, and has been for quite a while. Uh, before that, reporter. Uh, Marianne, you also worked for the Cape Cod Times and were my uh, colleague at the uh, uh, Boston Globe for a while too. Then we're going to have Ann Brennan, editor of the Cape Cod Times, um, Paula Hersey, who's the station manager of uh, Channel 18, Town of Barnstable. Um, I don't, I haven't seen Steve yet, but Steve Junker, who is the uh, managing editor for news at WCAI Radio, and then Hannah Trott, who was a 4C student. Um, and is now an operations assistant at uh, Provincetown's new publications, New Weekly, the Provincetown Independent. So, uh, Marianne, if you don't mind starting with you, um, I'd love to, your assessment of the current job markets uh, uh, and what it's likely to be in the future, especially all panelists on a local level, because I think it totally relates to national and international all the time. So please, Marianne, your assessment. Thank you, Carrie. You're kind of generous calling me your colleague. 
at the time at the Globe since I was an intern at the time. <laughs> Best intern I ever had. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> So I'm the editor at the Provincetown Banner newspaper. It's, we're based out in Provincetown at the tip of the Cape. We cover three towns. We're a print newspaper weekly, and then we're also an online newspaper pretty much around the clock. Um, what I can tell you, I've, I've been there as an editor a year and a half. Um, before that, I was at the Cape Cod Times as a reporter for 13 years. So really my most immediate experience with hiring is um, we have a full-time reporter and we also have a part-time reporter position. And what I can say in the year and a half is I've um, been asked to fill both of those positions. So probably the one thing that I would say that there is quite a bit of flux in the market. Um, and these two positions opened up really because um, people made life choices the things, even as simply as retirement or just moving someplace else. It feels to me like there's a fairly steady sense of jobs, particularly at a reporter level, uh, being open um, somewhat steadily. And literally, we're, we have an opening right now for the part-time reporter. Um, and that is, that is the kind of job where literally um, the skills, and we'll get into this later, but it's, um, uh, you know, being able to talk to people, interviewing, writing, and living um, right in the area. In terms of the uh, filling these positions, and if I just talk about the job market for a second, um, we ended up talking to fill a full-time position. We talked, talked kind of seriously, I would say, to about nine candidates. Most of those people came to us from um, either previous newspaper um, reporter positions or right out of college with a journalism degree, but that's not necessarily a requirement. Um, and what else are to say? Uh, I guess that's it for the moment. My, my main thing is that there was, it's flux and there are openings. And a lot of times it has to do with really people's life choices. I see, very nice, thank you very much. Uh, Anne Brennan, uh, please uh, welcome and uh, your assessment. Finishing up hiring two reporters and I'm desperately looking for a news editor. As, as you said, I think that uh, the job market looks pretty good going into the future. I know, um, I think that, I don't know if this is true, but I'm wondering if there's gonna be a resurgence in the interest in journalism as a career because of, um, you know, the things that happened in the past year um, with um, George Floyd, with elections, with, you know, all the many things that have um, been made for a crazy, crazy nonstop um, news cycle. Um, we're all exhausted, so we need you. Um, but <laughs> so I, you know, I do think that um, one of the things I'm really trying to to figure out is how to hire people from Cape Cod who know Cape Cod. And um, we're going to try and start a, um, a high school internship uh, with a, a group that I'm working with to get that pipeline going, because I do think it's really important that um, that we are part of the community that we're talking and having conversations with our community and understanding what, what it is that they wanna know about and that we're asking the right questions. So um, I'm an eternal optimist. I do think that, um, like I said, I, I've had openings and um, just in a larger um, sense, you know, starting somewhere either at um, Marianne, who I actually worked with at the Cape Cod Times um, and, um, you know, going to the Cape Cod Times. And then Gannett has, you know, I don't know how many papers, is it 300 papers nationwide? So there's a real opportunity there for people who want to grow in their career to, and, and don't mind traveling to work through the system and end up at, you know, one of the major dailies um, across the country. 
All right, thank you. And then uh, I take away from that too, the local knowledge is a big thing for the students yes. to know too. Yeah. Um, you know, th there's nothing like that for coming up with your own story ideas and so forth too. Um, or, or having an institutional knowledge of remembering, oh, I remember when this happened. And, and so when you're thinking about a story, you have that, that background. Yeah. And I wanted to add just one little thing really quick. Um, it's been interesting to me that um, um, I, I just love the generation, your, the, I guess, um, younger generation, uh, because I'm finding that I'm getting interviewed as much as I'm interviewing them. Um, questions that I'm asking, they're asking me back. And um, I would really encourage people to do that because it does help give information um, about you, but also so that you know that you're stepping into a job that um, you kind of know, you know, what the editor's idea or whoever's interviewing, what, what their worldview is. And um, I think it could make for a, you know, happier um, onboarding situation. All right, excellent. Thank you, Ann. Um, Paula Hersey, uh, welcome, and please, your assessment uh, more in the television realm. Although I know your career has been uh, has had a wide range of jobs too. So, <laughs> but give us your assessment, please. Well, as you said, a, a wide range. I am a liberal arts student that uh, went into journalism and media um, <laughs> from a community college uh, from the western part of the state. But the the media landscape, um, uh, I come at it from a uh, two ways. Uh, number one is municipal government is hiring communications. They have finally put that um, uh, job, that media job, that uh, public information officer at the forefront uh, of uh, some of how they communicate to residents. So I look at the media landscape as wide open uh, for folks who are storytellers, uh, who are uh, social media managers, a huge, huge opportunity for uh, communications and media in that uh, respect. I attended a conference just uh, last week that had well over 1,500 media managers from government uh, across the nation. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of opportunities in that type of work. So it would be social media management, it would be communications. Graphic designers are a huge piece of what uh, government is doing now. And again, your uh, TV, so that's really my background is in video and photography and that storytelling piece. And multimedia uh, has just exploded in the past seven years. Uh, so there are an enormous amount of different types of jobs, uh, whether they're journalism or uh, you know working for a company or working for government, multimedia is really uh, just a huge opportunity for students coming out. So that would include writing, it would include photography, it would include videography, it would include editing, graphics. Uh, there's just so many different disciplines uh, that all blend together in multimedia. So I, I see uh, the glass is overflowing at this point. Terrific. Thank you, Paula. Um, now, uh, Steve Junker from CAI, uh, not here yet. Um, so I'm going to skip right to Hannah. And Hannah, this seems a good uh, segue into uh, what skills you need too, because you, uh, you're you a fairly recent hire. And uh, the highlight, the reason I'm so glad you're here is because you went to four C's. Um, and it's a good start, I think, um, your assessment of, of current market, but also you got hired. And I'd love to know like you're from everyone in round two, you know, what was your path to getting this job, including other jobs you've held, what happened after four C's, what inspired you to go into media um, and what you see for the future. So Hannah, take it away, please. Sure. Um, so my assessment of uh, the job market right now, I agree with everything that's been said. Uh, I think communications and, and media is so, it's a, it's a ever growing, um, you know, topic and, and there's so many different positions that people can get in depending on their interests or depending on the past skills that they've had or where they want to go or, 
you know, there's always a jump off point. And um, I think it's just good to go in with an open mind and, and really uh, get out of your comfort zone too. Like don't say no to anything because something can lead to something else. Um, and advocate for yourself as well when you're in there and you're like, you know what, I think I actually could do some editing or I could take this on or I, you know, I could figure out uh, photography or something like that. Like it's never too late and the glass is definitely overflowing. I, I fully agree with that. Good. Hannah, where did you go to college after Four Cs and did, um, was this the first media job you applied for? Um, yes, so I did two years at Four Cs. I started when I was in high school, um, my senior year, and I got all my gen eds done. I got my associate's degree in liberal arts. And from there, I went through the mass transfer program, which I highly recommend to everyone who's at Four Cs now. I go into the high schools now and, and tell you know people that I know in high school about it. it not only saves you money, but everything is very guaranteed. Um, and you know, you're, it's, it's such a ease process. Um, so I went to UMass Amherst following four C's and graduated with a degree in anthropology, which was, um, <laughs> which was super random. And, and I only got interested. I didn't know what anthropology was until I took a class with um, Frank, I forget his last name, but he, totally opened my eyes to the world of anthropology. And um, I ended up really getting into archeology, span uh, record keeping, genealogy, that type stuff. So how I ended up, you know, working for a newspaper being in uh, communications, I just had uh, customer service skills. I, I worked in restaurants and I worked in retail and um, there was an opening for sort of like an administrative assistant. Um, and, and I just kind of came in and filled whatever roles needed to be filled. And definitely having the communication skills from all of the customer service jobs before uh, helped out with that. But you know, every day I am learning something. I did not graduate four C's or UMass Amherst thinking that uh, this is what I had in mind. You know, It's been very off the cuff this whole time and I'm, I just feel so lucky to be where I am. Good. Uh, Hannah, was that an advertised position when you applied or did you know somebody? Um, so I do, I, I knew a few people who worked um, for them as, you know, there was one person who I went to high school with and uh, he does our sports reporting. Um, and I had always read the paper. They've only been uh, established since September or October of 2019. So. Um, they're they're in an infancy stage right now, and I've been reading them since uh, since they came out. And you know, every week I would look at the paper and look at the classifieds, and I was doing job searches. And uh, this was advertised in their own classifieds, um, and I responded to the ad and ended up getting the position. And it was well, like I had been a fan for so long, and finally I was like, you know what? I I think I can do this. And I just advocated for myself and um, really lucked out. <laughs> it, I think it also helps to be have confidence in yourself, you know, which you develop with experience. But, you know, the more confidence you have as a student, too, that's going to uh, be of value down the road. That, that's my experience anyway. Yeah. Um, and I fully credit that to four C's as well. They they really and it's not it's not like it's taught outright, but um, the skills of self-advocacy and flexibility were at four C's. It was not at high school. It was not at UMass Amherst, but the skills that I learned at four C's took me through, you know, the, the official like four year college deal. That's great. Uh, uh, for everyone's information, Hannah was one of the outstanding reporters on the main sheet and uh, wrote many good stories there. Uh, Hannah, you probably know, we have just the website now during COVID. Uh, we may or may not return to the paper product depending on how things go. Um, but I, th I think that's a great way of making the point that it's the well-rounded individual who gets the job. Um, Professor Henry McClintock through the chat has just updated us. And he says at this time, Indeed.com lists two reporter jobs open in Hyannis. We know, I believe those are the Cape Cod Times ones and seven other media jobs. So 
Um, you know, again, reinforcing the point that there are jobs out there. Um, also, just uh, um, in order to uh, encourage everyone to give their personal experience, I know uh, you said anthropology. I'm a lit major with a BA. I then discovered there were no jobs. When I came out of college, the cover of the um, uh, Time magazine had this guy pumping gas, and the headline was, Harvard grad pumps gas, um, you know, so liberal arts, it's always uh, harder to find a job, perhaps, but more and more employees look for the well rounded individual. And you also cannot expect immediate success. I then went back for an MA and got it in film and literature. And then when I got that, my first job was bank teller, which I did for nine weeks and said, uh, this is too much money. Someday I'll take it all and end up in the Caribbean being chased by the authorities. But uh, my next job after that was assistant warehouse manager, which I did for five months. It was not until I came to the Cape Cod, uh, to Cape Cod and applied for a part-time copy editing open, uh, opening at the Cape Cod Times um, that you know, I think this re I think they were going to hire the next person who came through the door. I was fortunate that it was me. And then I learned so much from the talented colleagues uh, then and now. Um, and so uh, the lesson, I think, is you never know how it's going to uh, uh, work, you know, how you got into this business. You don't have to major in it. Um, and I'll return to that when we uh, a little bit more when we talk about skills. But let's continue the skill set conversation. Um, and Marianne, uh, if you don't mind, you, you touched on it a little, but your personal path to where you are and what you would recommend our students uh, do. Well, let's see. I guess risk taking, I would say, is a pretty big part of it, just to get into the field. And um, I had, at the time, this was like a hundred years ago, I'd moved to the Cape. I didn't have a job. I was kind of just dallying around the Cape, driving around. I went to a bunch of thrift stores and it came to me an idea that I would just write a story about thrift shops and submit it to a newspaper. So I wrote the first three paragraphs, I think, I drove it over to um, the newspaper in Yarmouth, the register. I stuck it in the door like a mail slot. <laughs> and then I waited. And then, um, you know, like two or three days later, an editor called and said, you know, we like this story. We'll take it and we'll pay you $45 for it. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> You're a pro. <laughs> my future. <laughs> yeah. So... That's how I got started. And then I went off and I was a computer programmer for about 10 years, not a good one. Um, and I made a career change um, in the mid late nineties. I went back to school. I went to UMass Boston. I, um, for an English degree, I got into the Boston Globe um, internship independent study program and um, had an editorial position at the Globe uh, office in South in Hanover. And at that point, it was also uh, just kind of doing editorial assistant type of tasks, but they fortunately let me write a few stories. And um, that kind of helped me develop clips so that then I ended up getting my first full-time job uh, at the Promise Town Banner, where I'm the editor now, but I was there as a reporter for five years. so. Mainly, I would say I just probably embarrass myself about a hundred times different ways <laughs> to try to kind of make it happen. That's good. So risk taking and uh, other career, you know, uh, it strikes me as interesting that you did computer uh, programming for 10 yeah. years Not before Not getting the bug. Uh, no, um, I would have made a terrible computer operator, uh, anything to do with the, uh, the but that's an interesting story. And Brennan, can you follow up uh, and uh, tell us how you got to be where you are? So um, I guess the theme of my story is to not give up. Um, I, you know, went to community college myself and um, I 
grew up in California and Hawaii. So I started community college in Hawaii and uh, finished at San Francisco City College and then went on to San Jose State University. And my first job, I wanted to be a sports writer and uh, my, I worked on the college newspaper. And my first <laughs> job was um, as a publicist with the Oakland Raiders football team. And um, I was either the first woman or the second woman person in the um, woman doing that job in the NFL. So um, the one thing it left me with is I never wanted to be the first woman at anything ever again. But um, um, I decided that I really wanted to um, do news and um, to, you know, left that job for a weekly paper and worked at a couple of weeklies in the San Jose area. And um, um, I, I got sick and came out to Mass General. I had a, a brain tumor and oh, wow. um, went back to work. At, in California, there were complications, came back here and, um, you know, had a year or two getting better. And I thought, okay, I'm going to go down to the Cape and I'm going to be a lifeguard for a summer. And then I'm going to go back and be an adult and work for a newspaper and decided, but maybe I'll see if there's freelance at the Cape Cod Times. And at the time, if you were a freelancer, it was like illegally, but you were kind of like a full-time reporter. And so I did that until covered the Kennedy weddings, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and um, um, now I'm forgetting her name, but um, Maria Shriver and other things and um, Caroline Kennedy's wedding. And uh, that impressed everybody. So I was hired at the Cape Cod Times as a night police reporter. And I am somebody who, as, aside from the thing I did with the Oakland Raiders, really wanted to be a journalist from the time I was in high school. And, um, you know, it's a double-edged sword when you know what you want to do, uh, because you really want to, you're not looking for other things. You really want to try and do what you want to do. So sometimes I wonder if maybe I missed some opportunities because of that. But um, I thought I was going to be a reporter the rest of my life until, um, and I did a lot of um, at the Cape Cod Times, I was able to do a lot of different type of reporting, um, town reporting, um, beat reporting in terms of politics and health and covered the military base and the, um, the botched cleanup at the military base, you know, in-depth reporting. And then, um, and I don't know if you know Alicia Blaisdell Bannon, Carrie, but yes. um, she's like, you know, really pushed me to become an editor. I did not want to do it. I did a kicking and screaming, uh, but I did, um, uh, you know, become a, an assistant editor and then started working up till I was a digital editor. And then I left the Cape Cod Times to become editor of the um, Metro West Daily News and the Milford Daily News outside of Boston. And then I've just returned since May back to the Cape Cod Times. So, and yeah. I feel good about being back. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, I love people's uh, stories. And I see a couple of parallels. Uh, when I got the part time jo uh, job copy editing, I was very ambitious and wanted to work my way up and I wanted to write too. And my first feature story, a uh, lot well, like uh, Marianne's and yours, I did uh, a feature on the Brewster Ladies Library. Um, we, and it was awful, not the library, my story, but the editor sat down at the time, you've probably heard of Barbara Van Nice, uh, a legendary wordsmith, and she sat me down and took me line by line through the story, and I learned so much from her, as did so many other Cape Cod Times editors over the past, I think. Um, and by the time she got done with it and I made some revisions, it became a really good story um, and ran on page one. So I was so proud that day. And then, you know, I'd work the uh, part time gig in the mornings, learning from good editors about how to be an editor and then write as much freelance as I could. Then they gave me, a, a you know, the Saturday uh, uh, Cops and Robbers beat and uh, then a couple of nights a week, you know, so I worked a split shift, but I loved it. So I, I think the um, persistence lesson is great there, too. You know, you never know what's going to happen. And I think so far I've heard so many living examples of that. So thank you. Um, Paula Hersey, you're next. Uh, tell us your uh, how you got where you uh, are now. 
I always say that the next career that I have is going to be the one I've worked for for the whole <laughs> for the, all this time, um, and and being flexible. Um, you know, I'm a, a product of uh, uh, Gen X, so uh, apathy is really where we uh, began our journey. Um, <laughs> I uh, I got accepted to Northeastern University. Uh, I was going to be a foreign correspondent. Um, that was uh, what I needed to do. I thought I was going to be a journalist from the time I was. Was, uh, in seventh grade and uh, we had some family tragedy tragedy that happened so I ended up putting those plans on hold and going to Holyoke Community College and uh, when I got out of college uh, again in the 80s there were no jobs uh, I would graduate in 1985 and uh, it was just a really bad time uh, similar to what we see today of uh, folks coming out of school so I had worked at Kmart Corporation for the last uh, four years from high school right up through college. And uh, they had some jobs in Naples, Florida. And I was, I was dying to get out of Western Mass. So I went to work for Kmart Corporation uh, in sales and marketing down in Florida and uh, worked uh, throughout my uh, two years down there. And they uh, were putting in point of sale systems and they needed somebody to train uh, folks from basically Florida all the way up the East Coast. And I put my name in the hat and I landed on Cape Cod and uh, um, literally never left. And that was 1986. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I stayed in retail for quite a few years. I worked for KB Toy, uh, KB Toys Corporate again, uh, as a store manager, as a district sales manager, as a regional training store manager, then kind of backed up a little bit and went to a small company, two small companies, Basketville and Connecting Point Computer Center. And when I hit Connecting Point Computer Center as the purchasing and sales agent and marketing, I realized I had an affinity for uh, computers. Uh, we didn't have a lot of it in high school at that point in time in the early 80s. And uh, took a couple of HTML classes, a few Photoshop classes, and realized that I really liked web design. And it was fairly new at that time. So I said, I think I could do this and um, went to work for a, a handyman. Some folks might know uh, Bob Vila. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was the multimedia editor for the bobvila.com website. That was my first job as a uh, developer and graphic designer and um, realized that it was really a, a great job, not necessarily working for him, um, but the, the content itself and uh, kind of worked my way into one of the very first startup companies here on the Cape, uh, High Tech, which was called Communica or Communicom and uh, mm -hmm. worked there as vice president of creative services. So, you know, a lot of my managerial skills uh, through the corporate world came with me into the digital world. And we created the very first portal on Cape Cod, uh, capecod.com. I was the original executive producer for that uh, website. We had a staff of uh, 18, uh, six of those being interns, high school interns. Uh, and then dot-com bubble happened and uh, everything kind of blew up. And I realized that I loved the work of uh, creating and wanted to get back to that. And uh, my husband uh, uh, kind of said, I think we, you could do this as I started my own business. So Penguin Digital Design was a boutique uh, web development firm and social marketing uh, firm here in the Hyannis uh, Barnstable region for 14 years. And in 2014, in 2014, I uh, hung up the, the shingle and uh, wanted to give back to my community in, in the last uh, decade or so that I kind of have for working and went to work for the Cape Cod Community Media Center as their outward, outreach. And there, everything that I learned in college, especially for TV production, came right back. It is a, uh, a public access uh, TV station. I worked uh, there for uh, through 2018 um, and I did everything. I was a director for the Sim Cape Symphony live streams. 
I was a storyteller. I was a on-air talent. I was producer. Uh, uh, Terry Duenas, who is a, a longtime fixture as the executive director there, uh, really literally uh, just gave me the, the keys to the car and says, go do what you want to do. And, and, you know, had a lot of opportunity there to kind of brush up some skills that I had thought that I'd lost. And then um, an opportunity came up for the town of Barnstable. I've been a resident here since 1986 and uh, really wanted to give back to the town. The uh, assistant station manager position opened up at their public access uh, government. Mm, some folks know, I know the uh, uh, Anne and, and Marianne definitely know, we cover 40 plus meetings. Uh, yeah, probably about 40 meetings a month. Uh, very small crew, there's four of us, plus all of the, um, what we like to call the town of Barnstable propaganda. Um, so we create, <laughs> <laughs> we create all of the stories uh, that are out there, the public service announcements, the, uh, oh my goodness, did you know we're going through a wastewater, a comprehensive wastewater management plan? Um, so, but my job has also evolved there. So not only do I do the storytelling piece or interview, I'm now the social media, um, uh, uh, I guess, person who manages the town's social media for the town of Barnstable. So we've really uh, looked at engagement on how we engage with our residents and how uh, people engage with content and really have tried to match the, um, I guess, the, the, the want of information with the consuming of information. And uh, so for the past year, I have done uh, an enormous amount of work through COVID. Um, you know, all the messaging that the town is doing through COVID. I actually built the BarnstableHealth.com website. Um, and I also built <laughs> the, the Barnstable Water Resources website too. So you never really lose your previous careers if somebody knows about it. Um, they always uh, kind of follow you in. So but a lot of our um, uh, skill sets that I know that I've used, the, the, the biggest one that I can tell you is to be curious. That's the, the largest skill that I can say. If you wanna get into media, you have to be curious. You cannot stop learning. There's just so much, uh, you know, between census and elections and uh, COVID and wastewater, you know, every subject that comes out of municipal government affects your daily lives. And I thought I knew from, you know, the last 30 plus years of living here, what goes on in town. I have no clue. Um, every, every day is a challenge. Um, that's a terrific story. Thank you, Paula. The, uh, and the Be Curious rings home with me. Uh, when I was at the Globe, we all had to make uh, videos sort of pitching the Globe in the, uh, when we first went more digital. And my one minute and 20 seconds, the last two words are when they ask what your suggestion would be to uh, students or people going into the field, the last two words are be curious. Um, so I think that is a huge lesson for everybody. If you're not curious, then the, uh, the world will not be as good as if you touched it with your curiosity and explored that a little. So I think that's terrific. Um, do, um, Hannah, we started with you, but after listening to these stories, anything strike you or does any panelist want to add anything to what's been said on any of this um, uh, before we get to the Q&A? Okay. No. All right. Uh, go ahead. Uh, nothing to say, Hannah. All right. Well, yeah, no, I, I've had um, the, it, the brief spiel of it is that I, I was just working, you know, regular Cape Cod kid jobs doing uh restaurant service, doing retail, uh, kind of taking bits and pieces from there, not not saying no to too much. Um, as a perfectionist, it was, it was really hard for me to take on so many things at once. Um, I think knowing how to market yourself is really important. It seems like a really cheesy, like cliche thing, but know where you're confident, know where you would like to um, experience growth and know how to be able to say that to a potential employer um, or, or colleagues or anything without coming off <laughs> like, like, you know, you're full of yourself. It's, there's, there's a balance to it. 
Um, sometimes it comes with age. I, I also know people who have never learned that lesson, <laughs> no matter how old they are. Um, definitely stay curious, keep educating yourself. There's so much out there. Uh, the one thing I would say maybe about like my generation in particular, um, we have the advantage of growing up with all of this social media and all of these, you know, systems and, and different types of media. Um, and it, it's something that's learnable for sure. But when you grow up fully immersed in it, um, people look for that. People are looking for social media type stuff. They're looking for, oh, you're good with computers. You're good with email. You, you know, you can pick up how a software works, whether it's for a subscription system or, uh, you know, making um, making a website or whatever it is. Uh, I think we might have the edge on that, just having grown up in a very like technologically uh, savvy age. That's great. Um, anyone want to add to that before I get to the question? Go ahead, Anne. Oh. I hope I don't insult anybody by saying this, but I think learning how to talk to people, if you want to interview people, um, you know, I think there's a, a big, um, you know, trend to email people your questions and hope that they get back to you. Um, but getting going yourself, or at least on the phone, talking to people when you're interviewing them and, and learning just how to talk to people, um, you'll get a lot more than if, and you control the interview at that point, as opposed to sending something off in an email and they decide how they're going to answer the questions, and it may not uh, often isn't what um, what what you'd like to get back. So, they, and there's no follow up questions. So that that would be something, um, you know, email has to be used sometimes, but it should be the last, 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 last option. That's a great point, and it it. it uh... I know in journalism one, I've had many students over the years and the biggest problem is shyness because they're just not used to talking people in this age when everybody's hunched over a phone or uh, you know, there's different ways of communicating, but the ability to communicate as you pointed out is huge. And that's what the first couple classes are all more about, uh, less about journalism and more about overcoming shyness and to ask questions and, you know, be nice to people and they'll give you information. You know, you don't have to suck up to them. And in some cases, the people don't want to answer questions, but per, that brings up persistence, uh, not only in your career path, but just in every individual interview, too. So, um, this segues nicely into a uh, first question I got. I asked my journalism one class to come up with a few, but at this point, I'm gonna open it to the Q and A. Um, I, I haven't checked the time lately, but uh, I think we're doing fine. Yep, we got 15 minutes or so. Um, the first question, and please, uh, uh, as I'm saying this, please put them in the chat. Um, and I've got some cheerleading here. Outstanding advice from Anne, from Nancy Willits. Congratulations, Anne. Uh, that, that's a hard uh, compliment to get. Um, um, and a uh, couple people just uh, uh, more or less applauding. But if you have a question, please put it in the chat, and I will do my best to keep up and uh, ask the next one. The first one I got from my class was, uh, and it kind of relates to this conversation, um, is a double major good. Uh, and their question is like journalism and politics. Um, any, any panelist a double major or want to touch that one? Uh, go ahead, Dan. Well, journalism and politics. Um, oh. Here I am. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, and what drove you into that and why? Um, well, I really liked journalism and I liked going out um, and, and, and being able to talk to people and hear people's stories, but also I'm not a very tall person. So I wonder if it often wonder if it was because I could stand in front that that really drove me into journalism. <laughs> um, but um, um, I, I think with I'm, I'm interested in politics um, and, and it, it carries to many things of how systems work or how people work um, in, you know, whether the politics is, is, you know, our government, but, um, you know, community colleges or, or, or your workplace or um, different other places that politics carries over to. And, um, 
I, I am a, a political junkie, I'll, I'll admit it. Um, and uh, so I think that, I think that the, the emphasis that you're making on liberal arts is really important because from one day to the next, you know, I didn't, I, I envisioned my career would be something else than it was. I didn't think I'd be on the night police desk um, covering, you know, seeing kind of not so great things, but just being, you know, covering police. I thought I would be maybe doing economics or something else. Uh, so, and, and I can't emphasize enough how much that um, biology 101 um, has played into my, um, my career of, you know, um, just with all, you know, all the, the DNA and everything that's, that's coming has happened since I've um, been in my career that that elementary, um, those elementary science classes that were really hard, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it did st stay in my brain and um, came into good use. So I can't, you know, they say, I've heard that uh, people who have liberal arts degrees may not make the most right out of college, but by the end of their career, end up making more than a lot of say engineers and, and other professions that make more right out of the, um, right out of the box, so. All right, thank you. Mary, Marianne, do you have your hand up? Please go ahead. I do. Uh, well, let's see, so I have an undergraduate and a graduate degree in English, like English literature. And I'm glad I went to, through that program because it just opened my eyes to a lot of different topics, particularly around racism that I didn't, I wasn't as prepared as I should be. So I think having a broad education in something different is really good, not just journalism. And just mentioned science. I ended up to get my undergraduate in English, I had to take an earth science class at Cape Cod Community College which was really hard, <laughs> the lab. And it was excellent because it told me, it taught me all about how the Cape was formed through glacier, you know, glaciers and the retreating of glaciers and all of that. And I learned so much from that that has contributed ridiculously to me understanding where the heck I'm reporting at from. So I would say the more, the more variety of education that you have is the best you can do. Good, that relates to double major too. Uh, next question is from one of my independent study uh, students, Megan Dundon, who asks, are there specific niches that you see trending in communication and media? Um, a niche publication for those who don't, or a, a niche outlet is something that targets a specific area um, rather than most newspapers or uh, media outlets are general news and information features, uh, you know, everything from page one hard news to dining out reviews. But are there specific niches you see? Uh, any panelist is welcome to take a, a whack at that. Um, uh, if not, that's fine. And we'll move on to the next question. We're starting to get a lot of questions here. Paula, please go ahead. Online, um, raw story, vice, uh, there seems to be, I, I call it shock. And I, I struggle to use the word journalism sometimes with some of yeah. these. <laughs> um, but but there is that niche that is starting to explode. It's the, the outer layers of um, uh, stories and uh, being able to um, uh, kind of use multimedia. Uh, we, we see a lot of that. I'm a huge Twitter user, have been since it was, you know, started. And a lot of these platforms, these niche publications have found their home on social media. They, they never were a print publication. They would never were a video public uh, video. They have meshed all of this together and have created these, these platforms really uh, that, you know, some of them are good. I mean, you know, I, I can't say that all the stories are bad out of there, but Politico has been another one that's been, um, you know, they're, they're all mm -hmm. trying to find their, their, their folks that will follow them. So, you know, th there are some out there. That's what I see that's growing exponentially over any others um, online right now. 
and that relates to the new aggregation sites like, like uh, uh, Politico. Well, Politico is not one, but uh, Real Clear Politics, Real Clear Everything they have now. Um, you know, uh, Huffington Post on the left, right. and you know, uh, God knows what on the. Uh, I know there's. Uh, uh, I can't remember the name of it. But I always have my students look at both sides, too, to get an idea. And please go ahead. So niches within a within a publication. Um, more and more, we have, obviously, we're a newspaper, but we're more and more digital first. And within that, creating niches of, say, dining. Dining is a really popular uh, topic for online audiences. And um, so creating a niche kind of publication almost with that. Um, high school sports is another one. Um, and um, so there's niches that, and I, I know that, uh, that that are developing within publications. Um, the New York Times, for example, is actually making money off of these things by, um, you can subscribe to their, um, their food pages. They have like a whole cooking site. And I know the um, Dallas Morning News uh, discovered that high school sports was something people were willing to pay for and they'd sell subscriptions just to their high school sports um, journalism. So there's there's niches within and there's niches without. Okay, thank you. Uh, I've got a bunch of questions here now, so I'll try to do justice. Uh, another one from a journalism one student, is there a type of media that is easiest to get started in first before trying to enter and tackle some more advanced media or journalism? Um, from Cole Allenby, I would say, Cole, what I preach in classes, and I know most of the panelists, and I know uh, they probably agree, the basic skill that's really good to have is basic writing, writing a clear sentence, you know, um, not using big words or fancy language or even get poetic, but to give, give an, a story in the clearest possible language so that there are no questions. I know that's a good start, but does anyone want to add to that? Is, there a, is it easier to start uh, you know, writing for a, a news outlet or, um, you know, uh, uh, Paula, it sounds like television, um, you know, especially community television, would you recommend that as a starting place? Um, you could actually start there today if you wanted. Um, your public access TV stations are created for uh, people who live in their community to find their voice and tell stories. Uh, so you can start with video. Uh, I know some of our public access stations on the Cape also have uh, radio. I think Sandwich Public Access has a, a radio station, if I remember correctly. But the best advice I can give for that is to actually start creating. And, and, and maybe use your passions, whether it's animals or um, uh, the environment or social justice, whatever it might be, offer your services to a nonprofit. Um, I can't say enough about how my career trajectory has been on the backs of some of the nonprofits here on the Cape. Uh, you know, just by donating my time and expertise uh, to do something for them, either photography or video or even writing uh, some social media posts for them has really opened doors uh, for me. So, you know, there's there's a lot of opportunity out there. It's actually just starting. It's, you know, go ahead and create something. See what happens. Um, a follow up there too, Paul, because one of our uh, former students, hi, Lindsay in Pennsylvania, uh, but she asked uh, what um, she asked about what you just answered. Do you foresee media jobs developing in more municipalities? And if so, what is your advice for drafting a resume? And maybe that's a good place to go now, too, about what should be on your resume, because you folks are mostly in hiring positions. Could we start with Paula? Uh, when you when someone hands you, what are you looking for in a resume? What I'm looking for in a resume is diversity. And it may not be diversity of uh, race or religion. It would be diversity of uh, background. 
so, you know, what have you done before this? Have you volunteered? Um, I find volunteers, uh, people who have volunteered uh, uh, much higher in the pile um, than folks that have never done any volunteer work. Uh, one of the other things that I look for in a resume, especially on the video side, is a digital portfolio. If you don't have one, don't send me a resume. Um, I need I need to see something. Uh, the town uh, right now we are deciding whether we'll take interns uh, this year. We're we're kind of waiting on the the COVID protocols. Uh, we do have an internship program. Some of my interns have gone on to form their own companies. Some of them have uh, created documentaries. Uh, so you know, there's an enormous amount of of uh, pieces in government that you can intern. So if you have an interest in environment, you know, wastewater is, is right there, man. Let me tell you, yes. uh, <laughs> it's, it's, but, yeah. but your resume, your um, resume should reflect diversity in, in experience. Um, yeah. And, and that experience doesn't necessarily have to be a paying job. Okay. Very good. Uh, Ann Brennan, as the editor of a daily, you do a lot of hiring. You see a lot of resumes. What are you looking for? Well, I agree with diversity um, and I agree, you know, diversity, that's a major theme right now, diversity and gender, um, you know, um, age, race, um, LGBTQ, um, but also, um, as Paula said, looking at what you've done, um, there's uh there, there are people who come who give me a resume and I can't believe how many internships they've done. Um, and a lot of those are not paid, which um, I feel like, um, you know, for the people who can't afford those, it kind of, it's not fair. <laughs> so we do have three paid internships for college students that, um, you know, if you're interested in, I mean, we've already hired for this summer, but you should look for that um, um, come around next December. But, um, looking at just, um, I, I like unusual background. I'm not so much, you know, it has to all be journalism. I'm, I'm trying to think of some of the um, uh, things that I saw in resumes of people that I've been um, talking to this week, but, um, and of course, none come to mind. But, um, <laughs> but there are, you know, there was one fellow who did an internship at their, um, on Long Island for the, um, their, the, county's human rights um, board, I guess. And um, they they would, one of the things they do is look at discrimination lawsuits and he would have to summarize the case so that the um, people who make decisions which cases they're gonna investigate, um, they you know would look at his summary, which to me seems like a lot of pressure for an intern. But um, what he took away from that internship was really interesting to me, like how government works um, and um, looking at, you know, what are some of the circumstances of people around him that he may not have known about. Uh, that kind of thing, um, when I'm saying, you know, journalism is great. It's, it's great for you to have some clips um, so that, well, I guess clips might be old fashioned, right? Now, <laughs> examples of your work. Um, yes. We used to actually clip them out, um, but examples of your work. And, um, you know, if there's, if there's things that um, a, an unusual experience, some kids are fortunate enough to, um, to uh, have study abroad opportunities. And that's not just, uh, well, study abroad, not just in another country, but in maybe another state or something, um, or another part of the state. Those are also um, things that I look for. It's, um, but I am looking for journalism experience as well. Good. All right. Um, anyone, uh, we're right on the cusp of three. So uh, um, I'll uh, one more question, and that's uh, another one from a student. What does a media job pay annually? Um, I'd start that off by saying, don't expect to get rich. It's not a lucrative profession unless you own the, uh, the business. Um, and even then it could be a struggle. But um, generally speaking, uh, you know, it pays uh, more than teaching, I think in most cases, but uh, 
you know, it varies. It depends on the job and where it is. You're going to make a lot less in, you know, uh, Bad Axe, Minnesota. Uh, you'll probably start a, a reporter there at 25 or 30,000 a year at most. Um, there's unfortunately a movement to hire, you know, lesser uh, Thompson, I know, is one of the chains that had its own so-called journalism school. And you take a nine week journalism course and get $15 an hour, you know, but it ranges all the way up to the uh, Globe, Post, New York Times, where probably every reporter even now goes from 75 to six figures, depending on the beat, how long they've been there. Um, I'm not, a, I know in some superstar uh, uh, television and radio, you can make a lot of money um, if you have a particular talent or get wildly populated. Uh, uh, popular. Um, anybody, uh, any panelists want to add to that as far as uh, compensation? Paula, please go ahead. We'll make this the last question as we've just gone over three o'clock. Uh, video can start anywhere, usually around the 50 to $110,000, depending on your skill set for videography, editing, uh, graphics packages, those types of things. In Municipal government, uh, you are uh, basically put into a box, um, which are pay grades. So specific uh, grades would be applied to what you would have as your position. And then there's uh, multiple steps in those grades and uh, anything in the, the, the municipal area usually is between the 45 and $65,000 range. All right. Uh, anyone uh, want to add to that? Um, go ahead, Marianne, please. Well, I would say the person that we hired recently full time was in the middle 30s in terms of annual salary. And that's with a college degree, right? And, and a, mm -hmm. a, a pretty decent resume, I would guess, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not easy to get hired, but for all the students out there, it's, it's never a good era to get hired. It's always pretty tough looking for a job. So what I would say is persistence also matters a lot, you know? <laughs> So um, I want to thank everyone for coming. I want to thank the Tilden Art Center for the technical support. Uh, panelists, you were outstanding. And uh, the college very much appreciates uh, your coming and educating us. Um, each one of the panelists, by the way, gets one of our uh, patented and popular uh, uh, Cape Cod Community College. You'll notice it says Four Seas Media. We're rebranding and bringing together the radio station, our arts magazine, Sea Change, and also the main sheet and making one big fat media conglomerate here. Um, so um, again, I appreciate everyone's participation and do email me uh, if you want to see more of these things. My attitude is let's do it again soon. Uh, but um, I'll be in touch with all of you too about internships and uh, employment for students too. Um, with that, uh, just thanks again to the Tilden Art Center and to everyone, and I hope you had a good time. Um, as of now, class dismissed. Thank you.